congratulations on the purchase of your Astro. The heartbeat of America, today's truck is Chevrolet. Side one of this audio cassette offers information on the operation of your standard equipment and helpful tips for both new or prior Astro owners. Side two of this tape offers additional tips on the operation of the special options you may have purchased, as well as helpful trailering tips for your Chevy Astro. In order to gain maximum benefit from this tape, we suggest that you listen to it in your new van. To help you enhance the future performance and economy of your Astro, let's go over a few tips to follow during a break-in period. First, we recommend that you limit your speed during the first 500 miles to a maximum of 55 miles per hour. In addition, be sure to vary your speed during this break-in period. Varying your speed allows many of the engine components to seat correctly for future performance. Second, you should avoid full throttle starts and, whenever possible, hard stops, especially during the first 200 miles of driving. Your passenger van is equipped with an ABS four-wheel anti-lock brake system. After you start and begin driving your vehicle, the ABS system will perform a self-check between 5 to 10 miles per hour. As part of this system check, you may hear a humming noise, or if your foot is on the brake pedal, feel a vibration. The owner's manual provides additional information on this self-checking procedure. In addition, your Astro has a unique front disc brake wear indicator alert system. As a special note, when you hear a high-pitched squealing or cricket-like warning sound like this, the front brake pads are worn and should be replaced. Continued driving could damage the brake system. When you turn the ignition to the start position, all your warning and telltale lights will briefly illuminate. This is simply a bulb and system check. After a few seconds, all the lights will go out. If a light remains illuminated, it could mean a system malfunction. We'll talk about some of these lights later in this tape. The telltale lights and gauges keep you in touch with the performance of your new van. Four gauges you should pay particular attention to are the fuel, oil, battery, and coolant temperature gauges. The fuel gauge registers the approximate fuel level in the tank. If your van is equipped with a digital instrument cluster, a low fuel condition, roughly one-eighth of a tank, will engage a flashing box around the fuel gauge symbol. This flashing will continue until more fuel is added. Section 6 of the owner's manual offers additional information on fuel, oil, and fluid capacities. The engine coolant gauge monitors the temperature of your engine cooling system. If the engine coolant temperature gauge shows a reading beyond the normal range, such as the needle moving into the red or amber areas with the standard instrument cluster, or a flashing box around the coolant symbol with the digital instrument cluster, you should stop your van as soon as it's safely possible to avoid damaging the engine. Remember that different driving and weather conditions affect the operating temperature of the cooling system. Minor fluctuations are typical. If an overheating condition is indicated, refer to Section 3 in the owner's manual. The voltmeter shows the battery voltage or electrical output of the alternator. Remember that different electrical loads or stop-and-go driving will cause minor fluctuations in the reading. With a standard instrument cluster, the needle reading should be to the right of center. With a digital instrument cluster, the reading should be in the center of the gauge. Within your digital gauge, a box around the battery symbol will flash continuously if the reading is too high or low. If the reading of this gauge is consistently too high or low, see your Chevrolet service department for an analysis of the system. The oil pressure gauge registers the force at which oil is delivered to various parts of the engine. The reading of this gauge is influenced by the outside temperature and the weight of the oil used. 30 to 40 PSI are normal during moderate road speeds of 35 to 40 miles per hour. Readings that are abnormally high or low may indicate an engine lubrication malfunction. A low oil pressure is indicated by the pointer moving below the normal range with the standard instrument cluster or a flashing light around the oil symbol with the digital cluster. Section 2C of the owner's manual offers more information regarding these four gauges. 
The trip odometer records your mileage for either record keeping or monitoring fuel economy. With the standard instrument cluster, press the stem in the speedometer face until you see all zeros. This will initiate a new measurement period. With the digital instrument cluster, press the trip button and then the reset button to initiate a new measurement interval. With the digital instrument cluster, you can alternate the mileage readings between the total miles driven on your vehicle or the trip mileage by pushing the trip button. By pushing the EM button on the digital instrument cluster, you can display all your dash readouts in either English or metric settings. There are several indicator and warning lights in your dash display. When you start your van, the safety belt reminder light will come on for four to eight seconds. Be sure to buckle up. The service engine soon light monitors the computer command control of your new Astro. If this light comes on intermittently or continuously while driving, the vehicle can be driven in most cases, but you should visit an authorized Chevrolet service department as soon as possible to have the emission control system checked out. There are two brake warning lights for your Astro. With the standard instrument cluster, an anti-lock light will illuminate if the anti-lock braking system is malfunctioning. With the digital instrument cluster, an anti-lock ABS light will illuminate if there is an anti-lock braking system malfunction. These lights only apply to the anti-lock feature of your brake system. If this light illuminates, you still have brakes. It is only the anti-lock feature that may be malfunctioning. If the brake warning light remains illuminated, it could indicate a possible malfunction of the braking system. But this light also illuminates if the parking brake is not fully released. If this light is illuminated, check your parking brake release. If the light still remains illuminated, see your Chevrolet service department as soon as possible. The headlights, tail lights, and side marker lights are operated by pushing the switches to the left of the instrument cluster. The switch with the headlight graphic symbol controls the headlights, while the switch with the P graphic symbol operates the parking lights. To turn either the headlights or parking lights off, just to press the off button. The wheel above the light switches controls the illumination level of the instrument panel. Rotating the wheel to the full right position turns on the dome and courtesy lights. If your lights or any other electrical components fail to work, check the fuse panel beneath the instrument cluster on the driver's side. Section 5 of the owner's manual shows how to remove the fuse panel cover, while section 6 shows a drawing of the fuse locations. The high and low beams of the headlights are controlled by the turn signal lever. Pulling the lever toward you will engage or disengage the high beams of the headlights and illuminate a telltale light on the dashboard when the high beams are on. Besides signaling turns, this lever also controls the operation of the windshield wipers and washers. To engage the wipers, rotate the band on the turn signal lever to either the low or high speed wiping position. Pushing the paddle on the turn signal lever engages the windshield washers. For continual washing, you must push and hold the paddle in. When you release the paddle, the washers will stop. For manual control of the wipers, rotate the control lever toward you. This will engage the mist feature of the wipers. If you have the optional delay wiper control system, you can vary the sweep of the wipers up to an approximate 16 second delay. The emergency flashers operate by a button underneath the ignition switch. To engage the flashers, push the button in. To disengage them, pull out on the collar surrounding the button. For information on the operation of optional lighting or cruise control, be sure to play side two of this cassette. Now we would like to offer some fuel and starting tips. Your Astro passenger van uses regular unleaded fuel. If you have the special high output engine, identified by a B in the eighth position of your vehicle identification number, located at the left top of the instrument panel, using premium unleaded fuel will increase engine performance. Your new van is equipped with electronic fuel injection. To start it, just rotate the ignition to the start position. Don't depress the gas pedal. With the EFI system, you could flood the engine if you depress the gas pedal during starting. During very cold weather, crank the engine with your foot off the gas pedal until it begins firing. 
Then depress the gas pedal slightly until the engine begins to run. If the engine fails to start, depress the gas pedal to the floor and hold it while cranking the engine for about three seconds. This should clear the engine if it is flooded. As a special note, don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds at a time, since it could damage the starter. And by the way, if you have the optional fuel door release, you'll find the release latch at the front upper corner of the driver's side step well. The four-speed automatic overdrive transmission is designed to make your driving as easy as possible. For the most favorable performance of your transmission, there are some things you should be aware of. The circled D position allows the transmission to choose the appropriate gear for load and driving conditions and should be used for most driving situations. The overdrive transmission is designed to shift into overdrive from drive when the vehicle reaches a steady cruising speed of about 40 miles per hour or faster for increased fuel economy. The D drive position should be used for increased performance such as driving on hilly roads or when towing a trailer. This position prevents the transmission from shifting into overdrive and provides more engine braking. The D drive position should also be used on slippery surfaces to avoid an unexpected downshift. And the D drive position should also be used if you notice what feels like excessive shifting between gears. Then when conditions improve, shift back to the circle D overdrive position. You'll find that the second gear position provides additional power for hill climbing or engine braking when you take your foot off the gas pedal. The first gear position is for maximum engine braking, like when you're driving down a steep hill or maximum engine torque when driving through deep snow or mud. You may move the gear selector to first gear at any speed, but the transmission will not shift into first until the vehicle speed is under 40 miles per hour. In the event that you must have your Astro towed, be sure to see section three of the owner's manual for the correct towing procedures. As a special warning, if you have an all-wheel drive Astro, there are special towing instructions. Be sure to see the owner's manual for the specific procedures. When you leave your Astro, make sure you set the parking brake by depressing the regular brake pedal, placing the transmission in the park position, and setting the parking brake with your other foot. To disengage the parking brake, hold the regular brake pedal down and pull on the brake release handle. You'll find the release at the lower left side of the instrument panel. Section two of the owner's manual offers additional information on parking and leaving your vehicle. For your comfort, your new Astro is equipped with easily operated ventilation and heating controls. The air vents on non-air conditioned models are located in the kick panels in each side of the passenger compartment. You can open or close these with the handles attached to the vent doors. At the top of the heater control system, you'll notice the heater fan control. This control has four positions from off to high. There are two slide levers on your heater. The right slide lever is the mode selector. This lever allows you to select any of the modes indicated to the right of the lever. The left slide lever allows you to adjust the temperature setting. For control of the interior airflow, place the right lever next to the mode you wish to use. The defrost mode directs most of the interior air to the upper defrost outlets. The vent mode directs outside or outside heated air through the dashboard outlets. Using this position is helpful in defogging your side windows. The heater mode directs most of the air to the lower heater outlets for maximum heating. The two blend modes control your choice of air outlets. You can direct the airflow through the defrost and dashboard outlets or the dashboard and lower heater outlets depending upon which blend mode you select. If you have air conditioning, an optional rear heater or a rear overhead air conditioner, these are discussed on side two of this tape. Your electronically tuned AM FM stereo radio has some very convenient functions. The seek button allows you to move up the radio band frequency to seek out the next available station. The scan button allows you to briefly sample all the radio stations which are available. If you find a station you enjoy, tap the scan button quickly to lock that station in. 
To preset 4 AM and 4 FM stations, first find your favorite station by using the tuning, seek, or scan controls. Then to lock in that station, press the set button and within five seconds, one of the numbered buttons. If you wish to preset more than 4 AM and FM stations, you can combine the numbered buttons to expand your preset station selections. You must press two buttons simultaneously, like button one and two, two and three, or three and four. To adjust the right to left speaker balance, use the larger knob behind the volume control. Pressing the volume control knob will display the station you are listening to, or display the time when the ignition is off. To adjust the front to rear speaker balance, use the larger knob behind the tuner knob. By pushing the tuner knob, you can switch your radio from AM to FM or vice versa. You can adjust the bass or treble adjustments by using the appropriate slider bars. To set your electronic clock, you must use the set button and the seek and scan buttons. When you push the set button, a set indicator light will illuminate. Then press the scan button to set the correct hour setting. By pressing the set button again, you can use the seek button to set the minutes. If you have a cassette player or a cassette player with graphic equalizer, these are discussed on side two of this tape. If you plan on using your van for transporting cargo, be sure to check section one of the owner's manual for removal of your rear seats. As a special note, be sure to secure all the cargo you are moving prior to driving. Cargo weight inside the vehicle should be located as far forward as possible. And make sure you don't pile cargo or luggage higher than the seat backs. With the rear seats removed, you can use the seat anchor pins in the floor anchor plates to tie cargo down. On vehicles that have luggage carriers, locate the cargo weight as far forward as possible. If you're pulling a trailer, be sure to listen to side two of this audio cassette, as well as reading section two in the owner's manual for trailer towing tips. Your vehicle certification label on the driver's door edge shows the gross vehicle weight requirements and gross axle weights your vehicle can safely handle. You can use these figures to calculate your maximum load carrying capability. When it comes to the maintenance of your new Astro, different driving situations require different scheduled service intervals. There are two different maintenance schedules for you to follow, depending upon how you drive your new vehicle. For example, Schedule 2 generally applies to highway-type driving, where the engine is warmed up to normal operating temperatures and there's minimal stop-and-go driving. On the other hand, Schedule 1 is applicable when your vehicle is used for short trips, towing a trailer, driving in cold or dusty situations, and stop-and-go driving. Be sure to read the Chevrolet maintenance schedule. This publication will simplify selecting the correct maintenance intervals and procedures for your driving conditions. By following Schedule 1 or 2 in the maintenance brochure, you'll help preserve your investment in a quality vehicle. One very important self-maintenance procedure you should do is check the oil level at each fuel fill-up. Section 5 in the owner's manual will assist you in performing this check. To access the engine compartment, the hood release lever is at the lower right side of the instrument panel. The best time to check the oil level is when it is warm. After the engine has been turned off, wait a few minutes to let the oil flow down through the engine. Pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, and push it all the way back in. Then, pull the dipstick back out and read the oil level. The oil level should be within the operating range mark on the dipstick. If the level is low, add just enough oil to place the level back between the correct operating range marks. For detailed information on checking your oil, selecting the correct grade and viscosity of oil, inspecting the coolant, washer and transmission fluid levels, along with other self-maintenance procedures, read section 5 of the owner's manual. Your spare tire is stowed under the rear underbody of the vehicle. With a compact spare, remember that this tire is only for emergency purposes. You should repair or replace the regular tire as soon as possible. Be sure to read section three of the owner's manual for the operation of your jack and the correct procedures to remove or replace a tire, and section five for tire rotation recommendations.
Your jack is located in the vehicle at the rear back corner. You may wish to invest in an air gauge to help you check your tire pressure regularly. The owner's literature found in the exclusive Chevy Astro portfolio contains a wealth of information which you should be aware of. You'll find your owner's manual, which offers detailed information on all the operational, maintenance, and care procedures to keep your van in top operating condition. You'll also find warranty information, which explains your rights as a consumer, and Chevrolet's commitment to keep your vehicle operating correctly. Other information in the portfolio includes the maintenance schedule, which explains the Schedule 1 or 2 maintenance intervals and procedures applicable to your driving situation, a separate warranty for your tires from their manufacturer, and business cards for key persons at your Chevrolet dealership. Special attention should be paid to the maintenance schedule and the owner's manual, which you should keep in your vehicle. We've pointed out only some of the information available in the owner's manual during this brief presentation. You'll find all kinds of additional information on operational procedures, cleaning techniques, recommended fluids, and helpful tips in the owner's manual. Please take the time to read it. Then, if you have any additional questions after reviewing the literature, please call our toll-free customer assistance center at 1-800-222-1020. For your convenience, this toll-free telephone number is also printed on the cover of this cassette box. We would like to remind you that on side two of this tape, you'll find additional information and operational tips about the special options you may have purchased to customize your new Astro. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this side of the audio tape. And again, congratulations on your purchase of the Heartbeat of America, your new Chevy Astro. Thank mm -hmm. you.